Okay, so here we go. Uh, finding the limit of a function as x approaches c from the left or the right, and just some notation stuff for you guys to see. So if I said to you this, for example, if I said to you, what's the limit of x minus 5 over x squared minus 25 as x approaches 5? As x approaches 5. Well, what this would mean is that we're going to approach, we're going to look at this function from the left-hand side moving towards the right and the right-hand side moving towards 5. So, but if I did this, if I showed it to you this way, if I took the limit this way, what do we want to take this limit? If I take the limit this way, then we would have this, wouldn't we? First off, it's not going to matter too much. Oh, it, it is going to matter, but look what's going to happen here. Um... What I'm going to do here is I'm going to factor out. This is a great technique. So here's this factor out technique. So I'm going to factor out. And hopefully your algebra was sharp and you realize that x minus 5, of course, is x minus 5. But this is difference of squares. So this breaks out to x minus 5 times x plus 5, doesn't it? So if you look at this, this cancels out here, doesn't it? x minus 5 over x minus 5 is 1, isn't it? X, that is to say, this thing is 1, isn't it? So what we really have is 1 over x plus 5. So if we approach from values greater than, and that's what this symbol right here means here, is from values greater, but arbitrarily close, right? We're going to keep getting closer and closer to that number that we want. We want 5, but we're coming from that side. So look what would happen here. We'd get, right, we'd get 1 over, so we have equals, so we're going to let x equal 5 here, and we get equals 1 tenth, wouldn't we? Okay, so here's another one. This one looks a little bit worse, but I think that we can definitely do this. So let's take a look at this for a second. So I'm going to say here, Find the limit. So what is the limit of 1 over change of x plus change in x minus 1 over x all over change in x? And hopefully you can see what the problem is going to be here. If change in x approaches 0 right here, we're going to have this whole thing over 0 and it will go to undefined. So I, that's what I want to know. I want to know well, what happens is change of x approaches 0. But if you don't mind, we're going to approach 0 from values greater than 0 from values greater. So what I'm going to do is, look, this is going to really help you, I think, is, look, start thinking about the algebra. We're going to turn this into a complex fraction. So I'm going to multiply this side over here by x over x, right? This is just simple algebra. And can you imagine that I'm going to multiply, take a look at this. I'm, I'm noticing this here. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to create, right, over x plus change in x. So what I'm doing here is I'm creating a common denominator, right? Okay. So, if I just continue this out, this will turn into 1 over x, x plus change in x, right? Minus x plus change in x over x, right? That's this x too, right? Times x plus change in x, right? Whole thing, we're going to just keep this, this is just algebra, don't freak out, this is just algebra, I am going to keep my, I am going to keep my notation up here, so here's my limit as change of x goes to zero from values greater than zero, right? But now look, I can put this thing together, can I? So I'm going to have one, oh my gosh, sorry, somebody else caught, <laughs> somebody else caught that, right? x times this. This should be x up here, shouldn't it? Okay, sorry about that. So now I'm going to simplify this again, right? I'm going to just keep doing algebra, right? This x is this one. This negative sign is this one. And this x plus change in x is this one here, isn't it? But look, we have a common denominator. So when we multiply, if we were to add 1 fifth plus 2 fifths, we wouldn't add the fives. We'd just make sure they had a common denominator. And they do. And this common denominator is x, oops, let me do this, yes, right, x times x plus change in x, right? And all I'm doing here, if you wonder where the hell this came from, 
this is this denominator and this denominator are the same. So when we add fractions with like denominators, we don't add the denominators. We just carry them over, don't we? And then stay with me. And then we have this whole thing here, right? And we're still working on this limit idea as change in x goes to zero from values greater than zero. Okay. So look what's going to happen here. I'm just going to walk through this algebra. I'm going to multiply this into here. This into here. That's a negative one there, isn't it? So if you don't mind, I'm going to show you this way. I'm going to say now what we have is we have this x. So x minus x minus change in x, right? I distributed this negative one. So I get all that. If you look at this now, this becomes some math that we can actually get our head around, I think, over change in x. And why would we do this? So we can take this limit and see if this simplifies out. So let's take a look at it here. x minus x. I'm going to do my work here. x minus x is 0. So this negative change in x is here, right? That's this one. So this minus this leaves that. So that's this change in x is this one right here, isn't it? All over, just like it was before, the x plus, oops, sorry, x times x plus change in x, x times x plus change in x, right? All over this little change of x down here. So this little change of x down here is right here, isn't it? All right, we're doing all right. We're doing all right. This is just, it's, it's, a, it's a pain, man. And it's not super, super easy. But I hope we can agree right now that all we're doing right now is just battling through some algebra, aren't we? Okay, you guys, remember complex fractions? So now this is a complex fraction, right? So it comes up like this. So if you don't mind, I'm going to say to you that this whole thing yields out change in x over, look, this thing here, right? So here's our x times x plus change in x. And I resisted the temptation the whole way along to distributing this crap. When you're doing this kind of math, leave it the way it was because you might find a piece is going to come out. Remember that when we take a complex fraction, we take the numerator times the reciprocal of the denominator. So this denominator becomes the numerator. And this numerator becomes the denominator. Right? So check this out for a second. Remember that we're still looking for this limit as the change in x approaches 0 from values greater than 0, right? Well, look. In a minute, we're going to be able to use direct substitution because, look, change in x here. See this change in x right here? And there's a change in x as a factor up here, isn't there? So change in x over change in x is 1. So And negative 1 times 1 is just 1 over x times x plus change in x. And we're, again, we're looking for the limit as the change in x goes to 0. I hope you're still with me on this because I don't think we've done any calculus yet. And frankly, the nearest thing we're going to get to doing calculus is that we're going to do right here is that we're looking for this limit as the change of x goes to 0. And all of a sudden... Look, when we were here, change of x couldn't go to 0 because we'd have 0 in the denominator, wouldn't we? Couldn't go to 0 here because we had a 0 in the denominator. But what about now? Because what if I take this out? What if, right? I said we're looking for the change. We're looking for the limit as the change of x goes to 0. So this was change of x here. What if I put it in here, right? Oh, where am I? See this negative sign right here? It's this one. I apologize. So is equal to 1 over, well, just distribute here. x times x is x squared, isn't it? So, all right, so that's the solution I'm going to stay with for now.